Hi everybody, Dan Oman on DRF TV for Top 10 Tuesdays, and this week we'll count down the leading 10 three-year-old Phillies in the division. Now this isn't a Kentucky Oaks watch list per se. For the latest news and notes on the Kentucky Oaks on DRF TV, please tune in to our Oaks Countdown franchise. Every Tuesday, Nicole Russo and I take a look at the major contenders and the major storylines for this year's Kentucky Oaks. This list is not going to be an Oaks list because we have several Bob Baffert train contenders on it and they're not eligible right now to run in the Kentucky Oaks. This is more of a list that's going to combine natural talent, overall accomplishments, and future projections to try to get you a yearly picture of this division. We'll start off by talking about a couple of horses on the honorable mention list, and I want to kick off with a horse that's knocking on the door of this list, and that's Venti Valentine, who was second in the Demoiselle as a two-year-old, going a mile and an eighth, the same distance as the Kentucky Oaks, and she came right back in her seasonal debut, winning the Busher at Aqueduct Ag. As she pleased. She earned a 92 buyer speed figure. That's one of the highest in the entire division, and she won by seven lengths. She is a very talented New York bred, and she's run well at the distance. I think she could continue to improve with each and every start, and we'll likely see her in New York for her final prep race before the Oaks. Another more under-the-radar three-year-old filly is a horse that just made her seasonal debut last weekend at Oaklone Park in an entry-level allowance race for Brad Cox. Her name is Interstate Daydream, and she won that race by over eight lengths with an 89 buyer speed figure and she was very visually impressive. With the divisional leader down at Oaklawn's Secret Oath right now preparing for a run against the boys in the Arkansas Derby, a race like the Fantasy becomes in play for a horse like Interstate Daydream. If they want to wait a little bit more, they of course could go to Keelan for a race like the Ashland. Let's look at our top 10. Unfortunately, our 10th horse is not heading for the Kentucky Oaks. Her name is Tarabi. We're going to look at her race two starts back. It's the grade one spin away at Saratoga. It's only her second lifetime start. She didn't break very well, and she just faced a beast in Echo Zulu, who would come back to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and be named 2021 champion two-year-old filly. Tarabi would run third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies behind Echo Zulu and Juju's map. Not bad at all, considering it was only her third lifetime start. She had to ship all the way to Southern California, and she was making her two-turn debut. She's obviously very talented. Now, she was going to prep for the Kentucky Oaks this winter at the fairgrounds. She had one breeze. The connections were not satisfied with the way she went. They kicked her out to the farm. Expect to see her back for a second season campaign. And maybe she'll be better at slightly shorter distances. Maybe the seven furlong test at Saratoga is going to be right up to Robbie's alley. The number nine is Nest. And Nest won the Demoiselle two starts back, going a mile and an eighth, beating Venti Valentine. Distance is going to be her friend. And trainer Todd Pletcher found a great spot in the race we'll show you right now. The Sun Coast stakes at Tampa going a mile and 40 yards. She was the heavy favorite in this race on form, and she ran to her paper. She won by uh, six lengths, only an 82 buyer speed figure, but I don't think Todd Pletcher's gotten to the bottom of Nest. I think she'll improve from a speed figure standpoint in her next start, likely to be the Ashland at Keeneland, and then it's on to the Kentucky Oaks. Number eight is Kathleen O, three for three in her short career for trainer Shug McGahee. Let's watch her last start, the Devona Dale, a grade two at Gulfstream going a one-turn mile, and this horse kicks very strong in the stretch. She doesn't have the most early speed, and you can argue in a big and bulky field like Kentucky Oaks, she might be a little bit trip dependent as well as pace dependent, but she's got talent. She's yet to take a backward step on the buyer scale. She earned an 85 in the Devona Dale. She has a very nice pedigree. She's by upstart out of a female family with plenty of class. We'll see her in the Gulfstream Park Oaks next on Florida Derby Day. That'll be her first test around two turns. The seven, six, and five horses on my list, well, they're probably interchangeable. They just ran in the same race, and they're likely to face off again in the Santa Anita Oaks, but we'll kick things off with the number seven, Ain't Easy, who showed a lot of talent as a two-year-old filly. She went two for two, and let's watch her race in the Chandelier, her second lifetime start. It ain't easy for a filly to go from five and a half to a mile and a sixteenth from start one to two, but ain't easy had no issues with it. She's a very professional type, good tactical speed, does everything right from a lead change standpoint, saves ground, isn't worried about being in behind horses. She won this race very, very nicely, and she was going to be pointed to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, but unfortunately an ankle chip knocked her out of training, and she missed five months after surgery. She returned in the Santa Isabel, and she finished an even third. I think she was just a short horse that day. I would expect a lot better in her second start 
of the form cycle for Phil D'Amato when she rematches with Under the Stars and Ida in the Santa Anita Oaks. Under the Stars is one of three Bob Baffert trained runners in this field, and right now those horses are not eligible for the Kentucky Oaks. Let's watch Under the Stars' victory in the Santa Inez two starts back, however. A very fast race going seven eighths of a mile at the great race place. She earned a 91 buyer speed figure, pressing the pace all the way around the track, and then a gamely holding off Awake at Midnight. Her next start, the Santa Isabel, was her first start around two turns, and she was the beaten favorite by Ida, but she was wired that day, and she kept trying in the stretch. Looking at her pedigree, I don't think a mile and an eighth will be a problem. We'll find out a lot more about her in the Santa Anita Oaks. As for Ida, who's number five on our list, she's won five of seven starts. She's a veritable win machine, and she finally put up a figure last time out. This was the aforementioned Santa Isabel, where she leans home under the stars and ain't easy, respectively. She got away to an easy lead in this race, and maybe Tripp made all the difference, but she held firm and gamely in the stretch. Now, I'm not sure about a mile and an eighth for her. She does have stamina on the bottom of her pedigree, but she is by Munnings. She's also two for two around two turns, including a grade one win in the Starlet to finish off her two-year-old Philly campaign. A lot of folks have forgotten about Juju's map, but she's very, very talented. Let's watch her win in the Alcibiades, her third lifetime start at Keeneland, a grade one at a mile and a sixteenth, and she showed good tactical speed to get up close to a fast pace and a nice turn of foot on the turn to make the lead. And once you turn into the stretch with this sort of advantage, the short stretch of the mile and a sixteenth run at Keeneland, it's going to be hard to catch a horse, the quality of Juju's map. She was a good second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies to conclude her 2021 campaign. Maybe she's gotten a bit of a late start this year. Her first workout was on March the 5th, a bullet three-eighths of a mile for trainer Brad Cox at the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds Oaks might be coming up a little bit quick, but maybe she shows up in a race like the Ashland, and with a trainer like Brad Cox, perhaps only one prep as a three-year-old could lead to success in a race like the Kentucky Oaks. Secret Oath is next on our list, and Secret Oath has been a revelation for Mr. Lucas at Oaklawn this winter. Three for three, three blowout wins, including this win in the grade three Honeybee, going a mile and a sixteenth, where she just dominated the field. She just completely swept by them and won as she pleased. 92 by her speed figure in this race, a 93 in her final start as a two-year-old filly. This horse has a lot of potential. She already is right now the current points leaders on, in the Kentucky Oaks, on the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. She is in the Kentucky Oaks. But right now, Mr. Lucas has nothing to lose by trying a race like the Arkansas Derby with a talented horse like Secret Oath. The winner of the Rebel, the last prep uh, at Oaklawn, uh, Unoho, was a million to one. You don't have Baffert to worry about in a race like the Kentucky Derby. Why not take a shot with Secret Oath? It's certainly not a pie-in-the-sky move, and if it doesn't work out, you can always go back to Philly's only competition. Adair Manor is up next arguably the most talented of the Baffert train runners. Let's watch her last two starts. 94 buyer speed figures in both of those races. Her last race, the grade three Las Virginis, she dominated this field. Just look at John Velasquez sitting as still as a statue on Adair Manor, who has very good early speed and puts it to good use. She's won her last two races by a combined 25 lengths. It's a shame we won't be seeing her in a race like the uh, Kentucky Oaks on so unless something drastically changes. But it will be interesting to see Baffert's next spot for her. Uh, she could run in the Santa Anita Oaks, but then she'd be running against Ida and Under the Stars, also trained by Baffert. Does she go out of town? We'll find out. Echo Zulu of number one, and you know, to be the champ, you've got to beat the champ. And she was the two year old Philly champion based on just simply a brilliant campaign. Capped off by this win in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, where she earned a 94 buyer speed figure going wire to wire. She went four for four last year, and she earned a buyer of at least 90 in each and every one of those races. And she wasn't headed in her last three starts. Now, we've seen over the years horses that were brilliant at two. Maybe they don't go on at three. Maybe it's a combination that they don't go on. They were precocious types or that other horses have simply caught up to them from a physical and mental standpoint. I wonder if that's the case with Echo Zulu, and there's always going to be a question about distance, but she's been working steadily at the fairgrounds for Steve Asmussen, and we'll see her make her long-awaited three-year-old debut in the upcoming Fairgrounds Oaks. There you have it, top 10 three-year-old fillies uh, on DRF TV's Top 10 Tuesdays. I'll see you next week.